Hi, I'm Tony Bogart, and I'm your host today for Something More. Today, we have one of the most wonderful guests. I love this man so much, Dr. Francis Miles. And we're gonna be talking about the open gates of heaven. Welcome to our show. I'm excited to be on Something More, Tony. I just love, I just, uh, we've, we've been engaged in conversation and there's just so much that you have to say about the altars of God. Yes. And knowing that you've grown up, you know, in a culture that is rich and moving in the supernatural. That's you right. You really have an understanding <laughs> of what it is to build altars and to move in the supernatural. So can you tell us what really is an altar? Well, you know, thank you so much for asking me that question, Tony. Yeah, definitely going up in Africa really is a big help. I think going up in Africa is where it will be close to what uh, uh, most Jewish people who lived in uh, cultures where altars were very prevalent in, Ju in Judaism could relate to. But Africa is like that. Mm. But, an, but uh, when, I was, when I wrote my book, when God began to talk to me about studying uh, the study of altars, because I'm a man of prayer, yes, you know, and uh, there were certain levels of breakthrough that I was not getting where I thought I should be getting. I said, God, there's something missing. And that's when the Lord began to talk to me about the whole subject of altars. Mm. And what surprised me and shocked me, Tony, is when I did a weight study of the word altar in the Bible, I found out that the word altar is mentioned many more times than the word prayer in the Bible. Mm. And that blew my mind. Wow, that's really interesting. But as I began to understand what altars are, I began to see the wisdom of God in it. Because the truth of the matter is the God of the Bible, the Hebrew God of the Bible, can never be approached without an altar. Mm -hmm. This is a testimony of every, every uh, book of the Bible. It shows us that importance of the altar. So what is, to give you the definition, what is an altar? Uh, an altar. An altar is a place of meeting. It's a place of exchange where humanity meets with divinity on legal grounds. Hmm. And so, uh, you know, because what, what something happened in Genesis 1 that necessitated the need for the altar. So I think the, 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 the entomology of the altar can be traced back to the sixth day of creation. Because, God, because Tony, on the sixth day of creation, God did something very unique that forever changed the relationship between God and man. He said, let us make man in our image, is that right? Mm -hmm. After our likeness, and uh, he says, after our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Now that word dominion, let them, those two words, let them and the word dominion change the relationship between God and man that would require and necessitate the presence of an altar in the exchange between our two worlds. And what do I mean by that? The word, uh, 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 the word dominion that's used in scripture yes. comes from the Hebrew word mamlaka. The word mamlaka literally means to be in charge or to be given stewardship over, to be given power to manage. So what God is saying is saying, I'm transferring the tools of power. I'm giving you the, I'm putting you in charge of the planet Earth. Those words, let them have dominion, made man become a sovereign in the Earth. Hmm. So here, here, here's interesting. So God makes man a sovereign on the Earth so that man can, re, can rule the visible reality on behalf of the invisible kingdom of God. God always wanted us to be kings in the earth. So here's what is interesting. God spoke to me and said, Francis, for you to understand altars, you, uh, uh, he gave me the example. This may, you, you might appreciate that because I, was, cause I, love, I love for the Lord to take ancient things and put them in modern terms so okay. people in our time can understand them. Yes. He said that to helps. me, Francis, Think of an altar like an embassy. Okay. He said, he said, when I gave you dominion, mankind, I literally made you sovereigns. So much so that on earth, God cannot do anything without looking for a man to work with God. God is at such integrity, even though he owns the earth, right. he gave us stewardship of it and dominion over it. That's why God would never do a revival without looking for the seed or a Francis Mouse or a Benny Hinn. He respects the sovereignty that mm -hmm. he gave us. So check this out. He said to okay. me, Francis, when two sovereigns, ha when, when a sovereign, when two sovereigns have to meet 
or enter each other's territory, they cannot do it, they cannot enter each other's territory by surprise. Let me let me explain what I, I mean by that. See that they probably get attacked. <laughs> yeah, let, let me let me let me explain this. This is going to be really exciting. Okay. He said to me, he said, think about this. You and I, as citizens of America, we could just out of the drop of a hat decide, hey, you know what? I haven't been to France. <laughs> I'm going to go to France. You get to France at the airport, they'll give you a, a visa. You will not cause an international nightmare. But right. President Biden can't do that. He's a sovereign. Oh. So when a government, if a president shows up at the airport of any country without the, that country knowing in advance that he's coming, he'll create an international incident at the airport because he's a sovereign. Oh. He just can't come like a tourist. So how does he get in? So th this is why governments introduce the concept of embassies. Oh. So an embassy is an auto of a government, of a government in a foreign country. That's so God said to me, God said to me, this is why if you remove the embassy of a country out of you, like say, for instance, if America says today, we are, we are closing the embassy of Iran in America, what are they saying? They are saying the citizens of Iran could visit America, but for the sovereigns, it's over. Oh. Hmm. Because a sovereign cannot enter another sovereign territory without a portal that negotiates the entrance of the sovereign into that sovereign territory. The altar is the embassy of God. When you build an altar, you are telling God, I'm ready to host you on legal grounds. That's really, really good. When you that destroy really the good. altar, you are telling God, we don't need you anymore. Uh -oh. And you see this in the story of Israel. It was about altars. When they built altars to the Lord, he came. When they destroyed them, he left. He's a sovereign. He just can't come into sovereign territory unannounced. He must be, he must be prepared for. That makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that's different than petitioning or praying. You have to have that embassy or that altar. That's right. To get into the next dimension of where you want to go. Exactly. You need the altar. The altar acts as a gate between the natural and spiritual world. It's a gate that allows spirits to enter in the world of men on legal grounds and men to enter the world of spirits in legal grounds. And the altar it negotiates those entrances. That's why you find when Yeshua was on the earth, he spent a lot of time by the altar because he wanted to see the engagements people were making with God. He, he knew everybody's spirituality by how they built around the altar. So fascinating. We're going to take a break for a minute <laughs> and we're going to return right back. We're going to continue to talk about altars. This is just an amazing subject. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Something More. I'm your host, Tony Bogart, with Dr. Francis Miles, and we are talking about altars and how that helps us to communicate to God and be a sovereign to be able to move in the spirit in greater dimensions. And this goes not only for uh, us as individuals, but it comes into our homes and it comes into our church family and into our ministry and into our lives, our daily lives as we interact with people. And we are those sovereigns that represent God on the earth. So let's continue to talk about that. How can we communicate more with God and how can we bring that altar into our home? That's very powerful, Tony. And, um, you know, this is, a, this is a big one. And, and I hope people are really paying attention to this. If you look at the Bible, you're going to find that the men of the Bible are separated by one thing only. Those who are able to build altars to the Lord and attend to them and those who are not able to do that. The Bible is full of every man God used without exception had to build an altar. The first thing Abraham does when he gets to the land of promise is he built the Lord an altar mm -hmm. and God spoke. They understood that without building an altar, you know, without building an altar, interacting with God is actually going to be impossible. Really? Like I told you, God as a sovereign will not just interfere in our world unless he's invited. God must be invited mm -hmm. into our context. Even though he rules the world and he knows we cannot do anything without his power, he needs to be invited. And the altar is how we invite the Lord. Wow. So now you're asking me about the home situation, for instance. 
you know, uh, what I want to do to answer that, I want to read a, f- a scripture, then I'm going to expand it because I think there's real meat here in terms of practical applications for people. Okay. Uh, in the book of First Corinthians, uh, 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 chapter nine, verse thirteen, okay. Paul was a student of Paul. Right, gives us a very powerful uh, s- a statement about altars. He says, "Do you not know that those who minister the holy things eat of the things that are of the temple, and those who serve at the altar partake of the offerings of the altar?" What does this mean? It means this, uh, Tony. That what Paul is saying is this, that in the kingdom, when you tell God that you are not employed and you are thinking about your natural job, it already shows God you don't know who you really are. Because in the kingdom, the, 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 there is nobody in the kingdom who's not employed. That's because true. every child of God is supposed to be a priest. And the first employment of a priest is to attend to the altar. That's so important. And once you attend to the altar, it opens up all pathways for the supernatural to go into other areas of your life. If you are not attending to the altar, then you are failing at your job as a priest. So how do you build an altar in your home, for instance? I tell people an altar is a dedicated place. So it was always a dedicated place in the Bible. So I tell people, find a room in your house. It could be a closet. Some of those clothes don't need to be in there. God <laughs> loves the power of dedicated places. Dedicate a room, clean it out, you know, put a menorah or something that would remind, and then dedicate that space and say, Lord, this is going to be the altar between you and me in this house. Wow. It's even so the practical, whole, right? It's a practical of doing it. Yes. So, because once you dedicate a place, see, God loves the power of dedication. Yes. See, God, hmm. theologically, God owns, you own, owns your whole house. But he, but he loves a house, he loved the, but it's God's favorite room in your house, is the one you say, Lord, in this room, we're not talking about my ankle, we're not talking about my husband, this is a room I come to talk to you. Oh, that's so good. God now knows, okay, now, so every time God sees you open that door into the closet, what, what, what does he know? She's decided to cut everybody off. She only comes here when she needs me. This is my room. And that becomes the altar. And when you do that, miracles begin to happen. Let me give you a testimony I think that you'll find pretty interesting. I was just in South Africa. Somebody had bought one of my books, The Battle of Altars, which is the book that most of the things we are talking about are in. And um, so I'm in South Africa, and I'm asking for testimonies. And this man, this man and the woman stand, stand up. I could see that he looked emaciated, but he was picking up a little. He looked better. My wife said, well, he was worse than you see him. you got to hear the testimony. He says, we saw your teaching on the importance of building an altar in a house to the Lord and then dedicating to the Lord and spending as much time as we can there as priests before the Lord. He said, Dr. Mouse, we did it. But here's what you did not know. My husband was diagnosed with stage four uh, uh, sp- spinal cancer, stage four. It was so bad, ah. they told him, if you have three months, it's a miracle. Go home and die peacefully. Wow. You know? He put his affairs in order. He was in pain. Like, as a wife, I couldn't do anything. But he told me there was something in our spirit. We felt we have to obey Dr. Moses' teaching. We've got to build the altar in the home. At least the last thing I do before I die, let me build an altar with my wife to the Lord in the house so we can enjoy our final moments oh, with the Lord so before the touching. altar. So women of God, they built the altar in the home. Check this out. Then they went to dedicate it. They knelt and said, Lord, We've never had an altar given to you in your house. This room now is cleaned out. We've put all different things. This is your room, Jesus. When we come here, we're coming to spend time with you. Mm. As they are dedicating the altar, the husband starts doing this to the wife. (laughs) She said, what's going on? She says, I feel nausea. I feel nausea. Uh. Please bring me a few nausea. Uh. So she runs and go and takes a plastic bag, and for the next 10 minutes, he vomits and vomits black stuff. When he's done, what, when he's done, what he did not know is that all of the stuff he vomited was all the cancer in the body. Oh, praise God. That's awesome. They went to the same doctors within a week because they started feeling better. And they looked at them, they scanned them, they said, what happened? He says, we can't even find a trace. Zilch. He got healed. Now he's on the mend. He, was, um, he came to my conference just to show me what building an altar in your Hallelujah. home to the Lord can do. That's amazing. 
Dr. Francis Miles, we got to take another break and we're going to be back. This is so powerful. Building an altar in your home can transform your life, bring <laughs> healing and bring the manifested presence of God in your house. We'll be right back. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Dr. Francis Miles' brand new book, Following the Footsteps of Rabbi Jesus into the Courts of Heaven. You will understand how to partner with Jesus to pray prayers that hit the mark. Plus, receive his brand new book, I Speak to the Earth, God's Divine Resource Center, exclusively offered here. You will also get his bonus audio CD, Commanding Prayers of Breakthrough. Interactive prayers that silence the enemy. It's all yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9912. Dr. Francis Miles, in following the footsteps of Rabbi Jesus into the courts of heaven, will mentor you to learn how Rabbi Jesus opens a door for you of limitless breakthroughs as the law of Moses is seen in light of God's grace. Understand how Jesus, as the Smika Rabbi, speaks with a special authority to be your personal advocate and lawyer in the courts of heaven. See how Satan is allowed legal access to the courts of heaven to accuse and prosecute believers day and night, according to Revelation 12.10. But you can silence his voice and get a verdict of innocent. Contend with power against the blocking spirits that are delaying and preventing your healings, miracles, and full destiny. Get armed with 22 powerful prayers that are written right from the rabbinical tradition of Jesus. With Dr. Francis Miles' book, I Speak to the Earth, you'll learn how to release powerful revelations of dominion over the earth, bring healing to the land where you live, and much more. And with his exclusive bonus audio CD, you'll be equipped to Speak to every need in your life and have victory. Battle and win over anxiety, depression, healing, and get breakthroughs. Find confidence and boldness to move in anointing power and miracles. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Dr. Francis Miles' brand new book, Following the Footsteps of Rabbi Jesus into the Courts of Heaven. You will understand how to partner with Jesus to pray prayers that hit the mark. Plus, receive his brand new book, I Speak to the Earth, God's Divine Resource Center, exclusively offered here. You will also get his bonus audio CD, Commanding Prayers of Breakthrough, Interactive Prayers that Silence the Enemy. It's all yours for a donation of just $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9912 or send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9912. having an amazing time here. And I just, uh, with Dr. Francis Miles, I want to show you this book. This is called The Battle of the Altars. This has to do with much of the topic of what we're talking about. And uh, everything is in this book if you're interested in pursuing more about knowing the altar. And also, I want to just say that Dr. Francis Miles has a show on our ISN network <laughs> that is called Our God, God of Wonders. Wonders. <laughs> and I uh, want to encourage you to continue to, to learn uh, from Dr. Francis Miles. He is an amazing man of God, teacher of the word, and with a revelation that he brings a richness to our culture. I mean, I think about the word altar, and, and in my understanding is totally different. You know, we think about it at the end of a church service, but this is about the meeting with God. And look at the transformation of the miracle that we had with this man and the spinal cancer because he built an altar in his home. And so what I want to talk about too is, uh, Dr. Francis, uh, how is it building an altar differentiate from praying to God? Because I know many of us want to know more about that. Yes. Well, uh, thank you so much for, for saying that. You know, first and foremost, there are, two there are two types of altars in the Bible. There is stationary altars, the one that you build in your house or the one you build in your church. That's why everybody at least knows the church altar because they got saved there, they got married there, so we understand that. Mm -hmm. But you see, God has always wanted yeah. to have a living temple, so our heart was designed like an altar. So your heart can also be, a mo I call my heart the mobile altar. Oh. Okay, so that's why God wants you to dedicate your heart to him. <laughs> Remember, an altar is a dedicated place. Oh. Lord, I dedicate my heart. Why the heart? Because the heart is the altar of God in the human being. Oh. 
so you can your carry God and your yes, passion and your love. With, exactly. But now, what's the connection between the altar and the and prayer? Again, this leads us to where we began, and I'm like, I'm thankful that we are closing here because I would like to pray some miracle prayer yes, for people absolutely. that are watching us. That's what we I want feel there's going to be miracles right now. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why is the word altar mentioned many more times in the Bible than the word prayer? Because I'm a praying man. Yes. I love prayer. And he said to me, Francis, that's because prayer, which does not come to me through an altar, is wishful thinking. I can listen to it, but I cannot answer it legally. Oh. Because if I, I answer it, I'll be violating the law of territory because I can only receive prayer through that comes to an altar. Wow. So therefore, prayer is the activity of the altar. Oh. Not the other way around. Oh. See, so God, That's very so clear. exactly. Now you, you got it. So when we pray, okay, you have to make sure that your altar, your heart is an altar. If it's not, that's why your, your prayers, your prayers hit the ceiling. You don't feel nothing because God said, okay, I hear your mouth speaking, but why is your heart not connected to what you are oh. saying? Because your heart is not being prepared to be an altar. But the same thing when you build an altar in your house. It's if you want to dedicate that place and you go and pray there, the prayers you pray from there are more powerful than anyone else. Why? Because you dig at that place and said, God, when I'm here, I want you to know that you are invited in my space. Amen. Everything that I say in this place is unto the Lord. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then you begin to see things happen. So, so that is a thing. So also prayer should, uh, so the altar precedes prayer. Ah. Okay, so you build the altar and then you pray from there. So that's why the Bible says David built an altar when there was a plague in Israel. And the Bible says, and the Lord heeded the prayers of David. He had been praying for the plague to end. It did not end until he built the altar. Then God heard the prayers he had wow. prayed before. That is so good. So we're going to just pray for people because I'm feeling an anointing yes. right now. I've been feeling that there's somebody who, had a, who has a chronic case of ulcers watching us. Right, As a matter of fact, the Lord is telling me there was, there's a time you ate something you should not have eaten. You almost pass out. That's how bad that ulcer is. Mm. But I hear God is healing you right now in the anointing of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. And right now, I want to pray for all of you mm. that I say, Dr. Miles, I want this anointing in my life. I want the anointing to build an altar in my house. I want to know how to, I want, I want to know how to flow with God. Amen. I want to pray for you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, I'm praying right now by the power of the Holy Ghost that you give your sons and daughters Amen. the supernatural ability to be faithful attendants to the altar of the Lord. Lord, I'm asking that the Elijah anointing, mm. the Elijah anointing be yes. released on, on your people because the anointing of Elijah was to restore the broken altar of the Lord. Mm. Lord, let every place where there's been a broken altar, whether it's in the heart or on the outside, where they have not been spending their time with God the way they should, Lord, I'm praying that you will touch them in a fresh and new yes, way, Lord. that they'll repair the altar of their heart, they'll, they'll begin to uh, uh, prepare altars in the home where they can dedicate to meet with you, Lord. I'm asking that that's going to happen, that the grace of the Lord Hallelujah. Jesus is yes, being released Lord. upon them. In Jesus' name we Jesus pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Mm. Receive oh, that. That's for you. That's for you. Shut up. Can we just continue to pray an impartation? Yes. Of, and, and, you know, just... Uh, for us to have the grace to be able to move into that next step. I, you know, I never yes. knew about the dedicated place in yes. my home. I knew to pray. But <laughs> wow, that is going to revolutionize my life personally That's and right. for those that are watching. So let's just pray for that impartation That's right. of revelation and understanding that you so do do so well. And you know, and you know what? I because the devil is a copycat, I also hear that some of you might be dealing with evil altars in your bloodline. Because you see, the devil is not an original, he just copies God. Yes. And so, Father, right now, I in want to pray that you destroy every evil altar that is causing them not to walk with you the way they want to. Any altar of depression, any altar of witchcraft mm -hmm. that is working against your people, come we come against we come that against thing. That. Mm -hmm. We say, you, you, you be destroyed yes. in the name of the Lord Jesus. We command every evil altar to let God's people go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We speak breakthrough in their life. We speak a new level of intimacy with God in their life. We speak a new level of hearing. We, Lord, I'm asking that the, e, yes. the hearing ear and the seeing eye will be restored to your people in this season to supercharge their supernatural growth 
in the Holy Ghost. I declare this in Yeshua's mighty name. Thank you for being with us on Something More. We'll <laughs> see you next time.